Okay, so now in the video we're looking at um, the mean bond enthalpies. Okay, um, calculation for AS chemistry. Um, so I'm going to run through sort of a few fundamentals here to begin with, and then we'll get um, stuck into a few calculations. Right, the first uh, part of this, this is a theoretical way to work out the enthalpy change of a reaction. So it is mean bond enthalpy calculations that we use and mean bond enthalpy is meaning uh, the average bond enthalpy and a bond enthalpy is the amount of energy needed to break uh, one mole of those bonds so what we're saying there is that if I am talking about the mean bond enthalpy of a carbon to hydrogen bond I'm talking about the energy needed to break that bond to give me carbon and hydrogen. Okay? Now, because it's a main bond enthalpy, that carbon hydrogen bond here in ethanol would be treated in the same way or had to have the same strength as a carbon to hydrogen bond here in methane. Now, whilst there may not be a huge amount of difference in terms of the bond enthalpy or the energy needed to break those bonds between that molecule and that molecule, there will still be some difference in terms of energy and that's why there's a small amount of inaccuracy when we use mean bond enthalpy calculations okay so this carbon hydrogen bond here will be slightly different in terms of its bond enthalpy than this one and in turn will be slightly different again from this carbon hydrogen bond but they're a quick easy and convenient way to do our enthalpy calculations so how do we use them to work out the overall energy change in a reaction or the delta H in kilojoules per mole of that reaction? Well, in a reaction what we're doing is we have got to first of all break bonds. Those atoms then after the bonds have been broken will rearrange themselves and new bonds will be formed in our P here I've written for products. Now, in order to break bonds, bonds being an attraction between one thing and another, we've got to put energy in, and that's an endothermic process. Not an endothermic reaction, because that's the overall, okay, an endothermic process. <coughs> and let's say that takes a amount of kilojoules to do so. Well, conversely then, if we sort of logically think about it, uh, when products are made, bonds are being made. Okay, new bonds are being made. And if it takes energy in to break bonds, well, it gives energy out whenever new bonds are made, and that's an exothermic process. So you can have two, an endothermic and an exothermic process going on in all reactions. And let's say that that exothermic process is kilojoules, as B kilojoules of energy, sorry. Well, if more energy is given out, so if I was to say that A is less than B, well then more energy is given out than is taken in. So that would give mean that I would overall have a reaction which is exothermic. More energy is out than is in. Alternatively, if more energy is taken in, so if A is greater than B, well then I have an endothermic reaction. Okay? And it will be up to us to work out what the overall extent of exo and endothermic nature of these reactions are. So the delta H is equivalent then to A kilojoules, the energy that goes in, minus B kilojoules, the total energy that is uh, given out in the reaction. And we'll either get an exothermic uh, a delta H, which will have a negative sign on it, or an endothermic delta H which will have a positive sign in kilojoules. On it. And if we were to look at those in enthalpy level diagrams, okay, so if we have enthalpy up there, an enthalpy level diagram would be very simple. The enthalpy of the reactants there, enthalpy of the products there, and of course the products here have less energy than the reactants, so energy must have been given out overall. LNG is lost, so that hopefully you can work out would be an exothermic reaction. The opposite would be true then if I had a endothermic reaction which takes energy in so my reactants would have less energy than my products okay so here energy is overall taken in and that would of course then be an endothermic reaction okay 
So that's our enthalpy level diagrams. That's how we, the sort of the principles behind working it out. That's where there may be some error in our calculations compared to the actual value for a particular reaction. So what we need to be able to do now is to work out what the uh, actual energy changes will be and how we actually do it in a, in a particular reaction. So we'll have a look at that. We'll do a few um, questions, a few past paper questions and um, <coughs> hopefully at the end of that you will be able to um, go off and do some of your own. So we'll take this reaction here, a nice simple one to begin with. And when I'm teaching this, well, the first thing I would say, well, this is this is C3, so C3, uh, H8 plus 5 oxygens to give 3 carbon dioxides and 4 water. So this is a combustion reaction. So the final answer here would be exothermic, of course. So your final delta H will have a negative sign also. As soon as I see a question like this, that's what I'm immediately thinking. My final answer has to be negative. You'd be surprised at how many people get the numerical correct answer, but leave the wrong sign on it. Okay, or put no sign on it at all. Okay, well, what's the next thing that we need? Well, in order to work this out, what we will need is a table of uh, bond enthalpy. So the strength of each of the individual bonds in here. So you get a table, and I'll, tr I'll draw, bring your attention to it, something like uh, this, okay, where we have the bond that we're talking about, and then the bond enthalpy, and that's in kilojoules per mole. Okay, so you'll get that. Right, I'll try and leave that sort of to the side if I can. Right, so you may, first of all, just get an equation like this. And what I would do, what I would encourage students to do, is to take that equation and draw it out with all the bonds of all the reactants and all the products. You can actually see what bonds you need to make and what bonds you need to break. Right? Then what I would do is you get your table here and we find out, we make a list of what bonds we actually are making and what bonds we actually are breaking. So draw a line down there. Okay, so here we have C, C bonds and we have one, two of them. Okay, we have C, H bonds. Okay, so C, H bonds. We have eight of them. We have oxygen bonds. O, to o double bond. We have five of them. Okay, so that, and that will be all the bonds that we're breaking. And the next thing that I would tell students to do is when you account for a bond, and you've drawn them out properly, stick a line through them, so that when you look down, you can see lines through all your bonds. One of the most commonly forgotten about bonds, I should say, is when you have an alcohol and people write C, O, H, and they forget that there is a bond between the O and the H there. So if you do have an alcohol, or indeed a carboxylic acid, do not forget about the OH bond down there. It's one that people just frequently, they just write OH because they're used to doing so. And forget about that little bond, it costs some marks. Anyway, back to this. So we have two carbon-carbon bonds. We'll go back to our, our table of data that we have here. Okay, and if we look at a carbon-carbon bond, a carbon-carbon bond is uh, 347, but we've got two of them to break. Okay. A carbon hydrogen bond um, is four one three and we have eight of them. Okay, and an oxygen double bond is four ninety-eight and we have five of them. So we'll just quickly top that up here on the calculator. Okay, gives me 7488 and that is in kilojoules okay because our data that we have in here in our table if you can see it okay is in kilojoules per one mole so that's in kilojoules okay right there we go over here and we have within each and this is another place where mistakes can be made within each carbon dioxide we have two co bonds and we have three co's all together so we have six times CO bonds, okay, each of which are 805 times six. 
lot of people do this and they write 3 times 805, okay, because they see the 3 here. What is a similar sort of situation where we have 1, 208 bonds within each water? So therefore we have 4, so we have 8 times the OH bonds, which works out of 8 times each OH bond is sorry, 4, 64. Okay, so 805 times 6 plus um, 464 times 8. It's going to be 8542. Okay, 42. So that's the energy that's going out, and that's the energy that's coming in. So I did say earlier that I, when I look at this, or I read the question, I know that this is a combustion question, and if it's a combustion question, I would expect a final answer of uh, delta H being negative, illustrating that it's exothermic okay well now what we've got here if you look is we have more energy going out than it's coming in so even if I didn't know it was a combustion question but I looked at energy out compared to energy in I should know there's more energy going out than coming in so it should be therefore overall an exothermic reaction so always be sort of looking as you go along and judging um, what you think your final answer might be. Sometimes you might be wrong, but more often than not, you're right. So there we go, there's our total energy change. It is indeed exothermic energy in minus energy out. Our answer is 1054 kilojoules. Okay? So that's that's how you do these guys. Um, I'll do another one here, um, but um, to be honest with you all, it's pretty much a variation on a theme. Um, we'll see if we can uh, have a look at this one. So we'll try and sort of blow it up a little bit. Hopefully you'll be able to see. We'll have a go at number seven down here. Okay. And um, in number seven, so the reaction of fluorine with dibromo, uh, diboron, sorry, uh, a hydride of boron produces a large amount of energy. Use the following bond enthalpy to calculate the enthalpy to into one mole of diboron reacts completely with fluorine. So this time we have we've we haven't we've been given the structure of this, but we haven't been given the structure of these. Now these for an A level student should be relatively easy to uh, work out. So you would be uh, very much expected to be able to do that. Right. So we'll have a I'll have a, a go at this, okay I'll uh, I'll zoom back out again. Alright. Um, and I'll try and do my calculation sort of Try and zoom in so that we can maybe see the question and see my calculation both at the same at the same time. Right. So the only difference between this and the 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 last one that we did is you have to work out the bonds which you are breaking in most of the reactants. Okay. Um, and products. Sorry. Which you didn't have to do in the last one. But to be honest with you, it's six F to F covalent bond. I'll go down this way to try and keep it on the screen. So we have 6H to F there and we have 2B F oh sorry F F F oh, do we go? Okay, so there, there's the where where we're going right. So we will then go over to our table, okay, and we'll just we'll just make a list um, down here of energy that's going in and energy that's going out. So going in, we have one, two, three, four, five, six times BH bonds, so it's six times three eighty nine. And again, I'll stick a line between all of those. And then we have a boron, 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 so we just one of those there, okay, and that's 1 times 293, and then we have 6 FF bonds there, okay, so that is 6 times 158, okay, so that's our energy going in. Gives us a total of 3,575 kilojoules. The energy coming out then, we have 6 HF bonds, and again stick a line through it and account for them. So HF uh, is 566, and we have 2 times, we have 3 BF bonds in here, so 2 times 3 BF bonds 
is of course 6 BF bonds uh, and it's 627. Please always double check guys on your table you're picking the right bond. The number of times we, uh, we mark these and we see that a student has gone 6 times and they've actually put the wrong number down there. Okay, which is not obviously a great way to lose marks. Okay, it brings us out of 7158. And I did send the question that it was a highly exothermic or produced large amounts of energy, so therefore we would have expected that value to be this value to be much greater than that. Uh, so if we didn't get that, we really should be asking ourselves some uh, serious questions in terms of that we've probably done something wrong in our calculator so that minus that gives us a very large negative value and don't forget your units don't forget your sign and that should be the correct answer okay guys so, so um Just going to look at one more uh, type here for a little second, guys, which, uh, which is a slight um, variation on the question that we were asked. So we've been given this, this uh, combustion equation here. This time we've been given the delta H. Okay, and we've been asked to calculate the carbon to hydrogen, the mean bond enthalpy of a carbon to hydrogen bond. So how do we do that? Well, we've been given all the information. Of course, we haven't been given this okay so and we've been given the bond enthalpies of the relative bonds in the oxygen carbon dioxide and the water so again the first thing that we do <coughs> is we write out or draw out all the bonds this is why you need to be good at your bonding diagrams in your uh, earlier in your module one stuff and your organic chemistry if they come up <coughs> so you need to know what the things are double bonded single bonded and what the structure is within them so again, we've got two oxygen bonds, both at 496, so we'll double that on that side. And then if we look at the bonds being made, we have our two C00 bonds at 1486 here, and our four OHs, two times two OHs at 1852, it gives us a total of 338. Uh, so energy in minus energy out, equals minus 698 so this factor here minus that equals that so if we do the 3338 minus the 693 <coughs> excuse me that means that the left hand side in total has got to be 2640 so it's 2640 minus that gives me uh, my minus 698 okay but remember that in within the 2640 is the 992 so we take the 992 out of the 2640 and we get 1648 is the energy contribution whenever I break the bonds within that but remember there's four carbon to hydrogen bonds in there so in other words four carbon to hydrogen bonds are equal to 1648 kilojoules so we divide that by four and we get the bond enthalpy of one carbon to hydrogen bond is therefore equal to 412 kilojoules. So that's, that's supposed to just really a variation on the theme of that question, but one that can sort of throw people in an exam situation if it was to come up. Okay, guys, um, off you go. Do a few questions. You've got lots of them in the past paper booklets and in the little energetics question booklet that we give you in class. Um, and if you've any problems, come and see your teacher.